My name is Gianfranco Ricciol, and I would like to introduce you in the mystery of a mechanical watch. It means what it is, how it works, and what's going on inside. But first, let us understand what our needs were in the past and how they influenced the way we measure time. At the beginning of mankind, we had no instrument to measure the passing of time. We simply counted day that passed. The succession of day and night were the rhythm of our lives. For the measurement of longer periods, we use the moon as a reference. And since its regular cycles are not far from 30 days, it inspired us to create the month of our calendars. And the movements of the sun during the year then inspired us to create calendars, considering the year and many other elements, like the seasons, for instance. But the question is, how do you divide a day into smaller parts? Therefore, we invented several instruments to measure intervals of time, shorter than the natural unit of a day, such as sundials, combustion instruments, or clepsydra. But then we developed the first clocks. Traditionally, in horology, the term clock was for a striking clock, while a clock that did not strike hours audibly was called a timepiece. In general usage today, a timepiece refers to any device measuring and displaying the time. But today we call it a watch, or better, a wristwatch. Inside there is a movement that many people like to compare with a car engine. So if you don't mind, let's try to do it in this way. Indeed, we could. Except that this one, the car engine weighs 200 kilograms and occupies a half a cubic meter and that the head of a single bolt will be bigger than the movement of an entire watch movement. And then a car engine has something like 200 horsepower. A watch has only one millionth of a single horsepower. Another comparison, engines use oil about three to five liter poured in a tank. To compare, this here is the bottle that the watchmaker who repairs watches daily uses during the whole year to lubricate his watches. It applies a micro drop of oil with this tip here. To each place where there are components to lubricate, there is no single tank in it. The dozen of oiling points requires, of course, the complete dismantling of the mechanical movement and cleaning all movement components before. And of course, everything is done by hand by experienced watchmakers. Last comparison. The homologation of a car consists of a crash test, which only has to save its passengers even if the car is completely destroyed. A watch also undergoes a crash test, which is even more violent, but then it must continue to work perfectly on your wrist. So please, stop to compare car engines with mechanical watch movements. They are in a way really much more impressive and performant. By the way, as you should understood, a mechanical watch movement must be compared with a purely mechanical engine. And this one allows us to do just one thing, move forward. On mechanical watches, we love to add some functions. We call them complications. This mechanical pocket watch from Vacheron Constantin shows that watchmakers are artists who knows how to make time speak with additional functions and complications. But let's come back to our explanation. I certainly prefer a more professional definition of a movement. A movement of a watch is the mechanism that measures the passage of time and displays the current time. This can be done in showing hours, minutes, seconds, or other information like the date, the week of the day. And this, it's not so difficult. You just have to be able to put all these components in the right order and you have a watch movement. Okay, okay, I know it's not so easy for everyone and that's actually the reason why you are here. You would like to know how it works, so I'm going to show you. The first thing we need is an element that vibrates or oscillates regularly. For that, allow me to take a hanging apple. This will be our time base. But now it's a matter of keeping these oscillations as regular as possible and uh, of course, so long as possible. In order to do that, you need a mechanism that brings energy to regulate the flow. I like to depict this in a simple way. Look, imagine 
A full bucket represents the energy we have at our disposal. We are going to transmit this energy as a liquid through tubes. And on the other side we have a mechanism that controls the flow of that energy. This mechanism is like a valve that opens and closes at regular intervals. Imagine that a needle on a dial simply shows us the flow of the liquid flowing out, the hand on a dial. In a mechanical movement we proceed in the same way, but of course without using water, mechanical components only. We distinguish therefore three sections. The energy, producing and accumulating some power, the transmission, transferring this power, the regulation, controlling and regulating this power. And in reality, these components, they look like this. Here they are. These are the essential elements of any mechanical movement. And they will be housed on what we call a main plate. But how they move and how they work together will be the subject of the next chapter.